Okay, so this is my not so great sketch of the images that we're seeing on slide two of our Desmos activity today for sticker sizes. And we've got the sticker of bunnies. And we're trying to get the numbers that would fill in the blanks for here and here. And I know you all have the skills to do this because you did it when we were dealing with whole numbers. I think it's the throwing the fractions in that's really getting to people. So I'm looking through at the people who did this already in this class. Um, and Ocklum said she cross multiplied. We haven't really talked about cross multiplying. It's one of my favorite things to do because it's pretty simple. It can be misused though. So I've been trying to be careful to not show it, although I will. Uh, Angeline, I'm going alphabetically, as you can tell, Aklam and now Angeline. I divided the only number that was provided by the original number. Then I used the answer and multiplied by the original number, the other original number by the, one, the number we got. That's how I did it too, Angeline. So knowing that multiplication and division are inverses of each other, Angeline's saying, look, I know that if I can divide this by this, and then multiply what I get by this, it's gonna get me this. We see what other people have said that might be different. Uh, Arish, my strategy is that each scale copy has the height doubled from the length. So if the length was three, the height would be six. Okay, so let's use a calculator and let's try doing the division and the multiplication piece. So there is a calculator on the Desmos. So why don't you all open it and do the calculations with me? Let's use the first one to prove what Angeline was saying about dividing and then multiplying. So if I take four, oh, if I pause the Desmos, you can't use the Desmos calculator, duh. Thank you, Val Valeria. All right, if I take the four and I divide it by two and two thirds, well, two and two thirds, first I have to divide and find out what is that fraction as a decimal because it's hard to divide with fractions. So I'm gonna do two divided by three and I get that six that repeats forever and ever. So four divided by 2.6 gets me a really long fraction. It's 1.538 and it goes on and on and on. And now I want to take that and I'm going to multiply it by the other amount I know, one and one third. And one and one third is the same as 1.3. I know that because I did one divided by three on my calculator and that three goes on and on and on. So I'm going to enter that in my calculator and it gets me two. So that just showed that if I take this number and I divide it by this number, and then I multiply that by this, it equals this. So that's gonna be true down here for these numbers we don't know as well. So I'm gonna call this Angeline. I know a couple of other of you put this in there, but she was the first I saw. This is Angeline's way of doing it. So I know this, I know four, and I know six and two fifths. So I wanna take my four and divide it by six and two fifths. Two divided by five is 0.4. So four divided by 6.4 gives me 625, 0.625. I'm gonna multiply that by the other number that I know, which is two. And that gets me 1.25. A 
which is not right. So I did something wrong. Which is funny because this is how I solved this problem. If I, let's try doing the division the other way. 6.4 divided by four. was 1.6, there we go, times two. Where am I getting the two? I'm getting it from up here. I'm taking what I know and dividing it by this. And then I'm gonna multiply it by the other part that I do know, the times two, and I get 3.2. So 3.2 works here, and so does the fraction 3 and 1 fifth. Now I know this is really messy, but I'm going to try the same idea that I can take what I have here and that I know, and I can cross multiply. It's okay, Asa. There's other ways of doing it, so don't worry about it. And Selena, I see. I know, brains hurt. This is actually my favorite way to do it. And it's the way that Aklam described in her comment. So I'm gonna put Aklam's way. And this is using cross multiplication. Cross multiplication simply means I have a fraction that equals another fraction, which you all know that from fractions in the past that if I have one, I can multiply or divide to get the one on the other side, which quite frankly is what some of you described in our first problem here. So if we look at our warm up, our first one was, <clears throat> and whenever I do this, I try to think of this as like um, a labeled thing. So I had my height and my width. And in the original, the height of that turtle was three and the width was four. And we know that we can multiply times the same thing, which is what we saw in our explanation from one of your classmates. And that's how we got six over eight. Well, cross multiplication is cool because since this works, that also means, and this is where the cross part comes from, that to check this, I can multiply what's across from each other in a proportion. Four times six is 24, and three times eight is 24. And since that fact is also true, if I'm missing one of these things, let's say I didn't have this eight, I still know that this times this equals two, this three times two gets me this six, this four times two would get me eight. That's nice and easy when we know that fact. But what if we don't know that? What if it's something confusing like a decimal or a fraction? Well, I can use cross multiplication and divide. So I can say, well, I know that this four times six is 24. If I divide that 24 by the three, that gets me my missing number. So I can divide by the one that is across from the one I didn't know. So let's go back and do that with our bunny stickers. I still have height and width. This is my height and this is my width. I can choose to do <clears throat> this first one, but I don't really want to because it's got fractions in it. I could also choose to do it with this one and that has whole numbers. So I'm gonna put the four here and the two here because this is my height and this is my width. 
What do I know from the problem down below? I know 6.25 or six and two fifths. I said 6.25. I know that the height is six and two fifths. What I don't know is this right here. That's my X or my missing part. I can cross multiply this two times six and two fifths. It's going to be equal to four times the X. And what do we find that two divided by five is equal to or the fraction two fifths? That's the same as saying two times 6.4. And that gives me to 12.8. And I'm going to divide everything by four. Twelve point eight divided by four is three point two. Four divided by four is an, is one and I'm going to leave it invisible and say it's X. That's how I can also find three point two. So that was quite a long way, but we looked at two different ways. You can use multiplication and division to take the numbers that we know. I took this number and I divided it by this number and took the result of that and multiplied it by the two to get my missing part. Or I could set this up as a proportion with my height divided by my or my height over my width is equal to the height I knew over the missing part and I can cross multiply and divide to find that. 